So here we are, we're here to talk about uniform circular motion. This is circular motion, this little red dot moving around the circle. Uniform means that the speed remains uniform, remains the same. You can see my little red dot is not speeding up or slowing down, it's remaining at a constant speed. That's what we're doing, uniform circular motion. Now, let me introduce you to my sliders. I have radius, I have speed, and I have time. When I click go, uh, you can see the time move forward and it moves um, with respect to time. Now, if I speed it up, obviously what happens is you can see the red dot moves faster. If I change the radius, then we're dealing with a larger circle. So those are the variables that we're working with here. I've reset the variables, radius one, speed one, time zero. Let's look at the distance traveled by this object and go. All right, and this is the distance around the outside of the circle and stop. Because I'm traveling at one meter per second and I've been traveling for 2.46 seconds, it feels obvious that this object has moved 2.46 meters. If I were to change the speed of this thing, make it speed equals two and press go, and let's stop it. Okay, we're at time 1.79, but the distance traveled is 3.58. That makes sense. Speed equals distance over time. Now I've reset my variables again. Radius one, speed one, time equals zero. Let's look at the angle. The angle in radians. We're gonna work in radians here. And go. Okay, and stop. Okay, after. 1.14 seconds, I've traveled 1.14 meters because my speed is one, so the time and the speed are gonna be equal to each other. And that's equal to 1.14 radians. Because you should remember um, that rate one radian is equal to the length of the radius of the circle um, around the arc. Right, that's one radian. If we go a bit further, go and stop and go and stop. You can see we've gone 2.14 meters. That is equal to 2.14 times the radius. So that's 2.14 radians. So now that we've got that, we need to talk about angular velocity. So angular velocity, let's work upwards at the moment. Let's not start at the formula. Let's start down here. At the moment, my object is moving at one radians per second. That's our angular velocity. How much the angle is changing with respect to time. If we go a bit further, okay, you can see that's not changing. We're looking at the speed of this object. We have gone 4.18 radians around the circle in 4.18 seconds. We are traveling at one radian per second. Now the formula for angular velocity, angular velocity is equal to speed in meters per second divided by the radius of the circle. So let's change the radius of the circle. Let's change it to two. Come on, okay. Now, we can see now that our angular velocity is 0.5 radians per second. Why? Well, we're still moving at one meter per second around the circle, but the radius is equal to two now. So that means one radian is equal to two as well, but we're only traveling at one per second. All right, let's press go and just watch this. Okay, and stop. Okay, after about one second, you can see we've covered about half a radian. We're traveling at 0.5 radians per second. And go and stop. After one point, after 1.19 seconds, we've traveled 1.91 meters, which is equal to almost one radian. Because remember, the radius of this circle is two. Uh, so we are traveling with an angular velocity of 0.5 radians per second. This is a new unit, you've never seen it before. Just to really harp on this, if we change the speed to like five meters per second and keep the radius of our circle at two, our angular velocity is 2.5 radians per circle. Go, one second, stop. After one second, you can see we've traveled five meters, which is what our speed was, 
and our angular velocity, we've traveled 2.55 radians because our speed, our angular velocity, sorry, is 2.5 radians per second. All right. So how long will it take to get around the circle once? That's our period. And that's equal to 2 pi over the angular velocity. So at the moment, the time it's going to take to get around this circle is 2 pi over 2.5 radians per second, because that's our angular velocity. So it's going to take us 2.51 seconds to get around the circle. Let's find out. Go. Here we go. And stop. Okay, you can see it took us 2.51 seconds to get all the way around the circle. That is how we calculate our period. Easy, straightforward. These are two formulas that when it comes to uniform circular motion, you need to have. Now, there are three other formulas you're going to need to have. A position vector, a velocity vector, and an acceleration vector. So, let's think about this dot. Let's move it forward a little bit. All right. The coordinates of that dot are equal to whoop, cos theta, sine theta. And you should know that from your study of the unit circle. Now, at the moment, this is a unit circle. So the coordinates of that dot are really straightforward, just cos theta, sine theta. But if it wasn't a unit circle, the coordinates of the dot would be r cos theta, r sine theta. So at the moment I have a radius of 2. So the coordinates of that dot right there is 2 cos the angle, r, co r sine the angle. Okay, but this dot is moving over time. And so that angle is changing across time. So it's a function with respect to time. And that function is omega t, angular velocity times the time. And we can see that if we just scrub forward a little bit. All right, scrub forward until we get to where my actual dot is. Okay, and you can see that the um, angle that I'm making is 0 0.95 radians. And that 0 0.95 radians is equal to my angular velocity, 0 0.5, times the time that I've traveled, 1.9. 1.9 times the angular velocity equals the angle that I've currently got, which is to say that this becomes wt, or sorry, omega t, and this is omega t as well. So putting all of this together, we get a position vector. This green dotted vector here, from the origin to our point, is describing our point, and it's given by this value here, r cos omega t i plus sine omega t j. Now, notice that the r is outside of the brackets, so the r is being um, connected or are being applied to cos omega t i and sine omega t j. And so, specifically at the moment, the position of our red dot is given by 2, the radius of the circle, cos 0.5t, so angular velocity t, i, plus sine angular velocity t, j. That is our position vector. Now, this is vector calculus. And so if we were to find the derivative of our position vector, we have our velocity vector. So expanding this 2 cos 0.5t uh, 2 sine 0.5t uh, so the twos in both of them and then we find the derivative of the i and the j components we get this we get r omega on the outside and then negative sine omega t i plus cos omega t j now putting aside the equation for a second look at this neat arrow just imagine you were taking this dot and swinging it around like on a string, right? And then suddenly the string broke. Stop. If the string broke at this moment, this object would fly off in this direction. This is telling us the instantaneous velocity of this object at any given time. And it's always perpendicular to the position vector. That just makes sense. You've 
you've swung things around before, you've thrown um, objects like that before, you know how this works. And finally, and this may surprise you, if you derive the velocity and you get the acceleration vector, watch, watch where the acceleration vector goes. Boop. It goes straight backwards towards that position vector. The position vector and the velocity vector, if we hit go on this, are always in different directions. And the acceleration vector is always at right angles to the velocity vector. So, position vector at right angles to the velocity vector, velocity vector at right angles to the acceleration vector. All right, so that's the end of the video. What I really want you to take away from this is an understanding of what circular motion is, the fact that there's like three really important ideas and really only those three important ideas, the radius, the speed, and the time determine where this object is at any given moment. Um, you really need to know the formulas for angular velocity and for finding the period, and you need to be able to find the uh, formula for the position vector, the velocity vector, and the acceleration vector. You should be able to start from this one and do basic vector calculus to get to that one and to get to that one as well. All right, uh, next video, I'll do an example um, question that you might get when it comes to circular motion.